Good evening, everybody. It's David McCoy here, Ochimo Properties and Real Estate Matters. Um, I think that I may have mentioned this in a video before, but uh, it, it comes up every once in a while and it came up today in a conversation, so I thought I'd mention it. And this, this is gonna be, I, I expect this to be a pretty short video. Um, and that has to do with um, real estate that has a negative value. Uh, it sounds kind of funny, but it is possible that real estate can have a negative value. And you might say, well, how in the world does that work? Um, well, it, it actually happens more than you might expect. Um, and it can happen really with, it can happen really with any kind of real estate. It, I would say more than likely you would see it most often probably with commercial real estate or possibly land, but it, it can happen with residential real estate as well. And so with, when this happens, it's usually when there is something, um, something really wrong uh, of some sort or another with the property. And uh, so there, are, uh, there is a term called brownfields. Um, and uh, that was a much bigger deal a number of years ago for some reason. It's still around, but people just don't seem to talk about it as much. And that those, I wouldn't say that they all are, but probably an awful lot of the property that is designated as brownfields has a negative value. And the reason it does is that they are, that land or those uh, properties are contaminated in some way. And the, the reason it ends up with a negative value is that the cost of fixing it exceeds what you could get for it if you um, sold it. Um, if, so the, the cost of cleaning it up. So this most often happens with things like environmental damage. It, it can happen with a number of things, but it might be something like that. It, but it, could, it can be other things as well. Um, it can be, you know, um, a structure that is falling down and the property around it is just, you know, it's just not worth very much. And the cost of tearing down that structure and clearing that land exceeds what that land value would be. Um, and, you know, it, those are sort of a problem. And, and I guess as I'm sitting here kind of thinking that through, um, I think it's probably fair to say that that's one of the things that happens lots of times in, in kind of blighted areas. Uh, one of the things about it is, is that the cost to fix it up really exceeds the value it would have for fixing it up. So you would spend more money on it than you could get out of it. And I think that's one of the reasons that they tend to become blighted areas. But it can be a lot of things. And so we have had programs in the past, um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they, they kind of come and go. So uh, it would depend upon where you are and what's going on. But we've had programs in the past uh, to try to address some of these things. Um, there are things that uh, there were uh, programs a number of years ago. I'm not aware of any going on right now, but there were uh, to try to get people to redevelop brownfield areas. And in essence, they were trying to give people some sort of uh, economic incentive or um, sometimes it's just like a lack of liability. I mean, that's one of the things that comes along with that. It's like, well, even, even if I did get it all cleaned up, am I also buying a liability for people that um, might claim that they were hurt by that property? So uh, there have been some attempts to try to work with that. Um, but it is, it is possible. You can have real estate that has a negative value. And of course, if you do, it's really kind of hard to get rid of. So there are different things that happen with that. And, um, and the laws, uh, I would say, are always evolving. So I can't give you a definite answer of where these are. And it probably is different depending upon where you are anyway, the, your local or state laws or, or whatever. But um, I know that there was a time where um, lots of times people would realize, hey, man, this is... Um, the cost of this is going to cost more to fix up. This, this was especially like with environmental things uh, back a number of years ago. Uh, 
like super fun sites and all those kinds of things, which are still around, I guess, but you don't seem to hear much about them anymore. Um, and uh, they had passed laws, and I, and I understand why they passed these laws, but they were trying to make sure that um, if you sold the property, you didn't also um, sell the liability to fix it up if, if it was found. And so a lot of people didn't, I mean, they didn't know what you know, to do with it. I mean, people didn't want to buy it. Uh, I mean, they were concerned about it and, and people would still have the liability even if it went back and it really made those things nearly impossible to get rid of. Um, for a while, I know people were doing things like donating it. You know, they would, they would uh, donate it to uh, the city or they would donate it to another, to a charity or they would try to try to put it in the hands of some sort of an organization that um, would not be penalized for having it in one way or another. Uh, but I, I'm not even sure that that's legal anymore. I, I mean, it, again, it's going to depend, but there, there were all kinds of things like that. Um, sometimes it's, it's not that, I'm going to call it a dramatic a cause. It, it's not always like environmental pollution or something like that. Sometimes it's just um, land that uh, you can't really develop. Uh, and uh, I mean, you, you've bought this land and, and you're developing a part of it, but there's a big chunk of it that cannot be developed. And uh, so it maybe, you know, it, maybe it doesn't have negative value. It, it could have a negative value, but it, it, it has a very low value because it's really basically unusable land. Well, sometimes like developers will kind of do that same thing. It's like, okay, well, I tell you what, I know that, you know, when I'm laying out my development and I realize that I can't do this, um, I might be able to donate that as like green space to the city or to uh, some organization or something like that. And then I can't develop it anyway, and maybe they can benefit from it. And I might even be able to take that as a um, tax write-off. Uh, but I'm not offering that as a uh, <laughs> as a tip. That's that's something. If you if you want to look into that, you really need to talk to your uh, real estate attorney or accountant to make sure that that is uh, okay where you are because um, some of these things people would do them and then the city or state or whatever would realize man we, we got to close that loophole we can't have that happening so I can't promise you that that's the case but uh, the big takeaway here is that it is possible to have a negative value on your real estate and it's possible you know when you're looking around at real estate you kind of need to think about that um, you know, if it's, if it needs work or something like that, you know, I, I kind of like, you know, getting stuff that needs work and fixing it up and repurposing it and doing that. But you do need to be aware of that. You need, you need to be aware of the fact that it could have a negative value. And, and if it does, it's, it's very possible that, uh, you know, you could get stuck with something. So, um, that, that's really it for the night. It's just sort of a little, one of those little quirky curiosities about uh, real estate um, that I think most people probably don't know. And so I thought that uh, we'd just talk about that tonight. So uh, that's it for this evening. I hope you had a great day today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a like on the, on the video. If you know someone who might benefit from it, maybe someone has property that might be negative, <laughs> you hope you'll share it with them. And I hope that you will subscribe so that you can see more of these um, down the road. And I'm going to call it an evening. Thanks a lot. And I will see you next time. Take care.